What's up guys, it's Michael from Misha Motorsports and welcome back after a long absence. Sorry about the wait, I had a couple reviews fall through because of the crappy weather, but uh, I kinda got also sidetracked with this little project that I wanna let you guys in on. I'm selling everything I own to buy a Ferrari. Not just any Ferrari, and I'll explain that to you as we go on. I'm attempting to see if I can sell almost every non-useful possession in my life to see if I can get even close to getting my dream car. Like most people, I just have a bunch of stuff sitting around that I never really use. I've heard about the Marie Kondo tidying up thing, and though that isn't what motivated me, the principle is the same as my approach. I've amassed stuff over my life through birthdays, holidays, and on my own, and none of this stuff really brings me much joy besides fleeting moments, or none at all. My reasoning is I use my desk, my bed, my TV, and my computer more than almost anything else that I have. My work is completely digital, and I have awesome parents who let me stay home and help me save money. Almost everything I have is just fluff, not things I really need or even want. But I know since I was a kid, a Ferrari meant more to me. It was this mountaintop goal, it was always aspirational, something that was out of reach and something that you just really needed to shoot for. And I'm not stupid, I know how much parts are, I know how badly they wear, and I know that it's hard to work on them. So I know it's not the smartest decision. And if that's what you're looking for, I implore you to click away now because that's probably not what this video series is gonna be about. This is about not really settling for external factors. It's about a story of me and my family and my grandfather and our connections. And it's about me trying to reach for a goal of mine that I've had since I was a young kid. So, with that being said, I'm approaching a unique situation right now where this thing can happen, but it needs to happen fast or it might not happen at all. Let me explain. My grandpa was a salt of the earth kind of guy from the south side of Chicago, basically lived in his mother's hair salon. He followed in her footsteps and created his own hair salon and invented a system called double booking that still impacts the hair industry today. He was even a self-funded race car driver, taking part in races like Formula 2 and Classic Series. While only owning one small salon, he invested his time and his money well into his passion, and it paid off. I remember the moment I fell in love with cars, when I turned eight, and he picked me up in his black Ferrari F355 to take me out to get ice cream. It introduced me to this world that I never knew existed. The tan leather, the shimmering gated shifter, it was just, it was so cool, it was beautiful. And he took immaculate care of these cars, treating them like investments. He would buy one when it was low in price, hold onto it for a few years and take really good care of it, and ended up owning six of them over 40 years, and even winning Concours de Elegance with his last Ferrari, a yellow 360 Modena, before passing away in 2017. He built his way from the streets of 40 Chicago to be a well-respected businessman and a passionate petrol head. He even put up a Ferrari mechanic in exchange for services in the second floor of his apartment. He defined somebody devoted to his passions, and he's a huge inspiration for me to reach for my own. When he passed away, he left his wife his 2001 Ferrari 360 Modena. It's an inaugural car for a Ferrari, cementing their 21st century design language and blowing its competition out of the water. Its 400 horsepower, mid-mounted 3.6 liter V8 sings at 1900 RPM, and this model is one of only 25 on Earth with a factory sunroof. It may not have a gated shifter, but I don't care in the slightest, honestly. The problem is, she may need to sell it. She already had a buyer fall through, and though I already offered to buy it by trying to scrape some cash together over the next like two or three years or so, there's no way I can think to afford this like living image of my grandfather in my life otherwise. So I'm making this video series so you guys can follow along my process, see how I do things like buy, sell, and maybe pick up some tips for yourself on how you can make some money on the side. I'm gonna start with all my stuff, and once I officially become a minimalist, I guess I'll start finding other ways to reinvest my money so that I can eventually get to this goal. I'm not sure exactly how much he's gonna ask for it, but I'm gonna set a base price of about $79,000 just to be safe. So I started listing a lot of stuff on eBay. Hey. <laughs> hey, Liv. So I started selling a lot of stuff on eBay. I made a couple hundred dollars in my first day because I listed like 20 things and I got bids and responses or immediate payments on about five things. So you can make a lot of money by doing stuff like that. It's just a little bit more tedious work. So far in the first week and a half, I've sold over $2,000 worth of stuff. So that's pretty great. I mean, within the first week and a half, we're almost 2% to our goal. So that's awesome. First, I started with really simple stuff that I assumed people would want. Just stuff that I had accumulated from basically childhood that I had never used again, but but definitely has people who are interested in it and would definitely want to use it after you. The stuff around your house can actually make you a lot of money. It's just about, you know, how willing you are to just go on the mobile app, take a couple pictures of it, and list it accurately. 
I try to keep a nice ratio between 90 and 150 items listed at any given time so that I can be making sales of roughly 100 to $250 a day. Sometimes I have stuff that I don't know if anybody wants or it's so old that it's out of date. Do those with a healthy mix of the 50 to $20 ones as well like this fun Tesla blanket that my dad got me at the Tesla boutique a really, really long time ago when like the first edition of the Model S had come out and they were selling all this weird merch, so they sold this gray official Tesla blanket. I had never used it, basically. Now, there's something that did add a lot of value into my life, but basically I admired it because of what it was. I never took it out of its package or anything. I'm selling it now and it's still worth over $40, which honestly, maybe more than it was actually purchased for. I hope if there's any impact to this video at all is to get you guys out and doing something. Get you guys out of your comfort zone. Sell your stuff. Do whatever you want to. Make it work for yourself, and you can, but you're gonna be the one that ultimately creates your own reality. And this is kind of why I wanna do that with mine, because I wanna keep this thing that encapsulates my grandfather to me intact and within the family. Hope you guys enjoy the journey. We're almost at $2,900, and by tomorrow we should be past $3,000. I'll be updating you guys on the journey, and uh, you can sub here and you can watch my other videos here and here. Thanks for watching.